welcome to the House to Spark Success podcast show. I'm your host, Liz Hamlet, and I'm a success coach and business mentor. And this podcast series is where I have conversations with smart and savvy business owners, thought leaders, and people doing amazing things around the globe. So I'm joined today by an amazing guest um, who is an Emmy award winning voiceover artist and actor as a TEDx speaker around giving great voice um, and using amazing communication in your um, day-to-day life and business. She's a master communicator and she teaches the art of confident communication. Um, And as a voiceover artist, you'll have heard her as characters in video games, so Poison Ivy, in Batman, um, in Star Wars, in in movie trailers, and she's filmed um, in films um, in opposite Sean Penn, Donald Sutherland, amongst a few, as well as soaps. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Tasia Valenza to the show. Hi Tasia, how are you? It's such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, what a beautifully uh, lovely uh, introduction. I feel very (laughs) honored. So thank you for that. Well, there was so much I could say. I've left a lot out, but I'm hoping we'll get to talk about that when, um, as we go along. So Tasia, do you want to um, tell us a bit about yourself, um, you know, and how you got to what you're doing today? Sure, of course. Well, I, I love to joke that I'm a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist because I did start as an actress and, you know, as, as actors, we're quite damaged very often because it's such a brutal uh, business. But uh, I started my passion for giving great voice, which is what I call to move, touch and impact with our voices. When I was uh, 15, I was discovered uh, by the late, great Louis Moll, who was a well-known French director at the time and got to be in my first film called Crackers. And it was one of those kind of Cinderella stories where one day I was uh, starring in the school play and the next day I was in an open call and uh, whisked off from New York City to Los Angeles and screen tested uh, with Sean Penn, who was my love interest, (laughs) uh, which was pretty heady. Although I wasn't really excited because I was I only knew him as Spicoli in High Times at Ridgemont High, and that was not a great, like, love interest kind of a, you know, <laughs> like I was loving Scott, Scott Bayo at the time, but not, not him. But so anyway, it was, it, was, it was exciting, but I started my um, acting career professionally. My, my parents actually had grown up being actors. They didn't do it anymore, but I had the, the gene. I, I mean, I loved, I knew right from the start that I was going to be. And also I had the needy gene, so it kind of went together. The, please see me. I love acting, but also I'm, you know, desperate for attention. Um, so that uh, turned into six months later getting on my favorite soap opera. At the time, I was on All My Children. Uh, so by the time I was 16, I was, I was, I basically finished school, left it, and started doing a soap opera for three years. Um, and you know, I was really loving it. At the same time, I was also again too much, too soon, not really handling it great. Uh, as teenagers will do. And I was let go after three years. You know, they can let you go every 13 weeks because soaps are like that. And I was, you know, I was shocked because I thought I had two more years. So that was kind of my first like, wow, you know, there's, it's not going to all be just an an uphill trajectory. And then um, I came out to Los Angeles. I kind of started all over again and did waitressing. You know, I kind of had to go back to my real humble roots and ended up on all these different shows and then made my way uh, kind of up. I still got to do some series, but I noticed that um, the same things plagued me that plagued many actors that, you know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're too short, too fat, too brunette, too what ethnic, what, whatever it is, much of it is based on this, this thing, you know, the the body and you coming in being exactly what they had in mind. And so my mother, the same person who was incredibly supportive of my acting, said, you should do voiceovers. And I was like, what's a voiceover? This is in the 90s. And she said, it's just when you use your voice, you just use your voice as an actor. And of course, I was like, I don't even know how to do it. It's too small to get into. But being a good mother, she plagued and she pushed <laughs> and she, 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 you know, she annoyed me until I did it as a good mother does. And, you know, I started working a little, a little bit more, a, lot, a little bit more. And all of a sudden I was in 
this kind of new magical period of time where the first time my talent and my voice was the winning combination and it was no longer this trapped you're not this enough in it so it was it was a liberating experience as an actor because i could act but no no longer be told you were great but it was like you were great and you got the job wow okay wonderful so that was over a six-year period i uh was doing more and more voiceovers and then one day my therapist mentioned that my mental health was going up in proportion to the amount of voiceovers i was doing <laughs> and so i thought you know what maybe I should really give this voiceover thing my full attention. And so I, I got to do a soap opera for 12 weeks. I bookended my career with that, with a beautiful arc. Um, and I've been doing voiceovers ever since, 20, 25 years now, and madly in love with it. And then um, the same thing that I started realizing that I could apply in the skill sets of being a voiceover artist to understand the role what's my intention and how does my voice support that role, I could start bringing it into my real life. And so this novelty of understanding how to give great voice started being something that I was teaching actors and then non-actors. And it's here I am, you know, this many years later, I just gave a TEDx talk on what it means to give great voice. And my passion is to teach people to have mastery over their communication in this novel way. Everybody has different ways to approach it. But for me, because I'm so passionate and I've seen how the same skills that I've applied as a voiceover actor successfully, I've also, along with emotional intelligence and work, has applied in my real life roles. And now my passion is to teach that to others so that they can also have fulfilling, meaningful lives. Because at the end of the day, this is our most powerful communication tool. Yeah, and I watched your TEDx. It was amazing. And I really liked that sort of using your skills that you've learned within your acting um, career and, and your sort of voiceover um, of how to sort of communicate intention. Um, and you did a piece about, you know, communicating one sentence in, you know, a no number of different intentions. And it's really, you know, you've got the audience closing their eyes and, you know, it's very impactful. So how did that um, sort of doing the TED talk come about for you? Well, that was another one of those seven years in the making. You know, you think, uh, I, 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 the reason I know it's seven years is because I had loved TED Talks and I was like, I want to do a TED Talk on what it means to give great voice. But, you know, at the time it was much more, um, it was much more superficial. You know, at that time I was like, I, I played a lot of video games and I thought, you know, I'll talk to college kids about upspeak and mumbling and, you know, but uh, as life evolves, I realized that give great voice means so much more than the technical aspects of what it means to articulate. Um, and I had a Los Angeles Times article um, that said anybody can give a great TED talk. And I crossed out the name and I put Tisha Valenza. <laughs> Cut to seven years later, I got to apply with a wonderful coach. Um, uh, Corey Poirier, who helped me kind of facilitate. And I, I had much more of an understanding of what it was. I applied, I got one, uh, they invited me and I looked at the date and it was 2013. So it was really like a, it was a wonderful, you know, don't give up kind of thing. It might take longer than you, but it, for me, it was, uh, it was very meaningful that I got to wait that long because I had much more meaningful things to say than I would have had I gotten it uh, previous. But it really helped me consolidate very challenged in 16 minutes what it means to give great voice. That's the great thing about a TEDx talk, if it, people aren't familiar with it. It's something that we, uh, worth teaching and learning, but you have to really consolidate it. So my two hour workshops, I had to bring into 16 minutes, but it seems uh, that it's been very impactful and it's also helped me focus again, what is the essence and how do we apply what it means to give great voice? Yeah, and it's amazing. And another thing that you've done about sort of giving great voice, which I've been testing out since we last spoke, is your um, Haven, um, the Affirmation app. So I know that from um, following you, you're very passionate about using affirmations in your personal life, your professional life, you know, and how powerful they are to reset the mind. Um, but do you want to tell us a bit about the Haven app? Sure. Well, that was another one of those, you know, the universe supporting the intention because to give great voice is to me a three-part experience you give it first to yourself because if you if i mean who's the most important person to give great voice to ultimately is yourself because if we if we come from deficit 
uh, we we really don't serve our roles very well, right? So the so the four questions that give great voice means is who am I in this particular role? Who am I speaking to? What do I want? And how does my voice support that intention? So even for ourselves, I mean, if I want to play the role of a successful, loving mother, wife, friend, daughter, a CEO, voiceover artist, if I, if I have the mindset of, oh, I'm an idiot, I'm so stupid, I, I always get it wrong, oh my God, well, hello, whoever, you know, you're, <laughs> you're really not coming from a great place. So I, I had the uh, opportunity to voice a, an affirmation meditation app. And I, I, I literally said, oh my God, I, I live this. I've been working on myself with affirmations. I asked the creators of it. I said, look, I think I can help and make this much better because this is my passion. Make me a partner mm -hmm. and I'll forego the money and I'll make something really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so my partners said, okay. They, they saw that I was really passionate about it. And so I got to co-write this beautiful affirmation meditation app that is again all about how we speak to ourselves and it's broken up in masteries um and it's it's i call it a be kind to your mind app because it's broken down into masteries on confidence on stress reduction and it's it's in the vein of calm or headspace but it's once you get into that nice relaxed state then we you say out loud i guide you through it with my soothing voice so that we can start speaking what I call the language of self-love. The language of self-love, which is very foreign to many people because it feels uncomfortable to say, I love myself. I believe in myself. I forgive myself. It's antithetical to what we've been taught. It's too cocky. It's too arrogant. But in my mind, it's something that if you can learn this language and you can use this tool, which is completely free, yeah. then you can fill yourself up. And you have so much more bandwidth to go out into the world and achieve your goals and desires, including your relationships. Yeah, and I love that. I've sort of been testing it out myself. And what I really like, it's really sort of manageable time in your day. Just sort of, um, it's set out um, in sections. So like health, wealth, um, different, lots of different sections. Um, and um, it's every day you've got sort of day one um, working through and it's just sort of, five six minutes nice bit of relaxation and i'm i can attest very calming voice as of course you <laughs> well practiced but it was very calming um but also how positive affirmations are and i've used affirmations um a lot in the past um to get me through times when perhaps you feel a bit wobbly <laughs> i'm not quite so confident it's very normal for all yes, of us yes. the course um, of a day yeah, so I've been recommending the app to um, a lot of people, particularly so um, powerful that is a free app as well. So that's fantastic. So Tasha, um, what do you think um, has been the biggest factor in you becoming successful? Well, that's a great question in terms of, you know, I would say perhaps the definition of success changes right along the road right so that's that's probably one of the things that we could talk because what is success in my 20s it would have been something that it is now in my early 50s it's completely different but i will say that um success for me has been something that i feel the ability to overcome my setbacks and believe in myself enough to achieve over and over again when the, when the road has been like this, like this, like this, like this. And so to, at this point, success means um, being a wife and a mother in a very meaningful relationship. I've been married for uh, 20 something years. And again, you know, making that decision to, to get out of acting to me, that was a successful choice because I had this voiceover because I know that highly unlikely I'd be married to the same guy <laughs> for 20 years. So I think it's really making decisions based on really loving, again, myself and believing that I deserve good things mm -hmm. as opposed to when I was very insecure and did not feel worthy, making choices uh, to, to, to gain outward success but not inward success is that if that makes sense I, I feel much more grounded that at the end of my days I, these relationships are the most important 
Do I love being honored for my career? Yes. Do I love being successful in terms of making money? I have to, I, I have to work. Um, but the adulation that was more important to me when I was young and insecure is much less important to me than uh, being purposeful, being meaningful, doing good in the world and having these deep relationships. Yeah, and I think that's so key because as a success coach, one of the first things I do with my clients is identify what does success mean for them. So like you say, you know, for some people, it might be sort of hitting a monetary amount in terms of their business. For other people, it's the impact they have. And for other people, it might be sort of the community that they're building and followers. So, yeah, I think that's really key. And I think definitely the journey through life success will change and will look quite different so that's um really interesting definitely and i know i've sort of um seen you being interviewed um uh with other shows and things and that's definitely that's something that comes through um and you know what you're doing now having that real impact with the app with what you're doing the teaching and everything so um, we've mentioned affirmations as one of the sort of success habits you have, but what would you say your success habits are on a sort of daily basis, weekly basis for you? So yeah, that's a definite one. I actually put just yesterday and posted that, you know, one of the first things I do uh, to, to program my brain first thing, because I, you know, like anybody, like my, my, my desire is to reach for the phone. That's like the dopamine, like, oh, reach for the phone and see who's the email. So I, I, I have my affirmations on my, my mirror in the bathroom and I forced myself to say them aloud, to set the computer. I'm very aware now that, you know, habits are really all about mindset and mindset is from changing little habits. So uh, drinking a glass of water first thing, because that was part of uh, another mindset app that said, you know, drink a glass of water, start that day. So it's, it's the tiny little shifts, then going to the bathroom and saying, you know, today is an incredible day, success, prosperity, and abundance. And the thing is, I recognize again for myself that looking at it and saying, oh, I've downloaded it is not enough because the act of saying it aloud is, the, you know, because we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day downloading unchecked. Most of us, I mean, I didn't even know this. When I made the app, that's the first time I was like, how many thoughts a day do we have? Do we, and 60 to 70,000, how is that possible? <laughs> right, because every moment that we're, our conscious brain is busy brushing our teeth or right, doing the dishes, most of us aren't in the mindful, wow, my, the bristles are on my teeth. <laughs> And I feel the, the cold wetness of the, no, we're thinking of the thoughts that, you know, oh my God, I'm late on this and, when I, and I'm so, whatever the, the thoughts are. So the act of saying the words out loud, the affirmation, so that I don't let my thoughts start taking me away, that's one of the most important. It sets the tone of the day. And again, give great voice, the metaphor. It's like, even when I say it, affirmations work only if there's conviction behind them. It's like anything. In other words, you could say, I love myself. I believe in myself. These affirmations, that, well, that's so stupid. It doesn't work <laughs> because, uh, because they're just words. But if you have an intention behind those words, which is the same thing. I mean, the ones with the, the power, you know, the Tony Robbins, you know, Superman pose, change your state. That's an affirmation that I say. And then in the using the app is when you get into the nice relaxed mm. alpha state when you're much more receptive. Mm. So for me, it's always about how can I keep reprogramming what I understand is a computer. And I, and I think of our computers as hard drives, our minds, and that we always need to be updating the software because it's usually running on a very old program. <laughs> We're really programmed from zero to seven. And unfortunately for many of us, that was not the best programming because our parents and their parents all did the best that they could. And certainly that was for me, a program. And through, you know, these kinds of habits of talking to myself all day long to reshift as a, you know, how am I doing? To, how am I doing this moment? Am I thinking something that's going to support me? Or am I starting to go down the rabbit of looking at, you know, social media for an hour? And, you know, and I'll just reprogram and recalibrate, like, is this helping me? No, 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 no. Let's get back. But in a way that's non-punitive, because that's the other thing is that, oh God, I'm such a loser, I did it again. So I think it's really the self-talk yeah. that I keep shifting back to like, 
understanding that it's these habits are hard to form, but only by doing little um, wins every day, the water, the affirmation out loud, perhaps again, you know, getting on the phone, but not, you know, doing 40 minutes of Instagram, but just 20 and then saying out loud, okay, let's get on to the next thing. So I talk to myself quite a bit all day <laughs> and I, I give from, I would love to give permission for people to talk to themselves, but only nicely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's so important because I speak to so many really capable people, you know, in business, in, you know, running their own businesses that, you know, you hear they'll talk um, that's just knock them down. And, you know, affirmations can, you know, and also sort of negative affirmations, um, if you sort of say them too many times of like, I'm terrible at this, I'm terrible at this, you know, after, you know, 10 times you will start to you know knock yourself down so um you know i totally um support that and i think you know that's well i didn't know that it was sixty thousand thoughts but i certainly you know have often have lots of like thoughts and ideas pinging around my head and something that some of the other guests have talked with a lot about is just that importance of that time to just slow down take five ten minutes just it, um, some of them call it thinking time. Some of them call it meditation. meditation you know, time. Them, yeah, those, are, just, those are powerful. Yeah. And I should have mentioned that. Yes, I do do some journaling, some gratitude journaling. That's another thing that, of course, and it's, of course, you have the woo-woo factor of like gratitude. You can, but it, it again, if you think of your brain as the programming, gratitude is one of those things that you just a programming positivity by the very nature of doing it. So you're literally again, uh, focusing the brain on something that will assist you for the day. I'm grateful that I woke up today. I'm grateful. And again, the simplest pleasures. I'm grateful that I have, I'm, I'm healthy today. Uh, it doesn't have to be, I'm grateful that I'm, you know, rich as all get out. It's, it's the ability to focus on positivity because the, the, the brain is looking to see what you're interested in and it will show you more of it. Yeah. So getting to the journal, writing five things I'm grateful for, or saying them aloud, which of course in my affirmations, I am, I, I'm grateful that I, you know, I'm powerful, I'm healthy. That is a gratitude, but some people like to write it. Um, these are all focusing positive frequency energy to have more success for the day. And again, the act of the self-kindness uh, really, as you know, again, you can have the most successful person in the world, but behind closed doors, if they're tearing themselves down, it, you know, that, that, that's such a difficult place to come from because you have to mask yourself that much more. Mm. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. So sort of talking about sort of looking back and, um, you know, journeys and everything, if you could start it all over again, what would you do differently? Uh, if I could start it all over again. Well, if I have the ability to learn this language of self-love early, if I, and I, my father was kind enough, he went to therapy in the 60s and he saw me at 15 really struggling. I was really in a lot of pain and, you know, angst and he sent me to therapy, which, you know, that was really extraordinary. This is the eighties, mind you. Um, thank God we were in New York and he had access, but he said, I think you could use some help. So I would say that that was the beginning of my journey of starting to reflect on my feelings. Um, and if I, you know, I watch it in my children because I've had the chance to kind of apply this, this self love early. Um, I see that it works cause they really are amazing kids and they have a lot of self love and also to feel their feelings fully. Um, they don't numb them. They don't try to, that's another thing is that when we push our feelings down, you know, they come out the sides. So I think if I were to have a chance to have done it all again, I would have started speaking to myself and really understanding that um, I have the power to reprogram, tap into the subconscious early and start, uh, rewriting my history earlier. I didn't understand that I had that. I always thought it was more, um, you know, that right place, right time. But I, I did, 
I did learn from the psychology of achievement, which was my first foray from Brian Tracy in my early 20s, this ability to reprogram and at the law of expectation. And whatever you say after I am or I have consistently tells your future. So that was very powerful for me. And that did change. So that's the only thing I would do is start self-loving earlier. <laughs> earlier because from when when i feel loved and i feel good inside all my choices are better because i'm not coming from a place of deficit or i'm not enough or will you approve of me uh, and make me whole i mean it's kind of it's a, it's a very general answer but i think that's I, to me that's the core of doing better in every other aspect uh, is that it always has to be not from a shallow place of i love myself but really, I love myself. I forgive myself. I forgive whomever may have done their, you know, hurt me. And again, that's very difficult for a lot of people to forgive. It doesn't mean you forget. It just means it, it frees you to keep reliving yeah. whatever that, that, that is holding you down. So it's really just about what's going to, to move you along to the success that you deserve, that you deserve. And I think that comes across, um, you know, we've, we've talked a number of times now and, you know, just how passionate you are about what you do, how joyful, you, you know, it seems of, you know, just really enjoying and sort of taking a lot, but giving a lot back as well in terms of, you know, I know you do a lot of charity work and, you know, the app, you know, work on the app and everything. So um, I think um, that's great. So, and, and I'm sure during your career, you all have received lots of different pieces of advice, some good, some bad. Um, but what would you say has been the best piece of advice that you've received on um, being successful and sparking success? Always give more than you've been asked. I think that's a really, you know, to that, that, that can do spirit of, if you, if, if someone thinks that you're fantastic and would like to hire you, you know, give that extra 10, 20% so that you stay in their minds and they're like, wow, this person was not here just to get the job done and then go on their way, but they exceeded. And that was definitely Brian Tracy back in the day. It was the, the law of, you know, overgiving because it, whether it's that person directly or a connection or something down the line, Napoleon Hill said, you know, uh, that, uh, his greatest achievements came like four times separated from where he gave. He'll uh -oh. tell stories like he did something here and then four times removed, something amazing happened. So that's, that to me is when you, when you give to the best of your abilities and then some, it will come back to you tenfold. Oh, I love that. That's a great piece of advice. So, Tasia, have you got any sort of final words that you'd like to um, give the people listening today about giving great voice? Yes, well, I mean, it, I, I would just love to share that the four questions you can ask yourself to, to begin the process is always think of yourself as the role, the voice actor in your own life. Think of the role that you're playing whether it's the CEO, the manager, the, the courageous, confident candidate. Think about who you're speaking to when you get on that Zoom call. Um, is it somebody that you want to get the investment from? Is it somebody that you want to inspire? Uh, is it, you know, again, is it the employee? Is it a manager? Is it a, a possible new boss? And think, what do I want? What is the success of this scene? I want them to offer me the job. I want them to uh, have a sense that I am trustworthy and capable. How does my voice support that intention? How does my voice, do I sound warm? Am I smiling because that even the nonverbal communication shows that I'm warm? And to really just have some fun thinking of your instrument now, this voice, to start utilizing it to support your message in the way you intend it, as opposed to just kind of going in there and just saying the words, really understand that when you intentionalize the words, you've captured the heart as well as the mind. And of course, if you go back and you want to watch my TEDx talk, that kind of, you know, it's a little bl blurry until you understand, but I really break it down from the acting roles into the intentionalizing, and it makes much more sense, but that your voice is your most powerful communication tool, and you have so much power in it, and I want to empower everyone to start using it 
to the success of themselves, for their professional lives, and then to deepen their relationships with those they love. Because at its essence, to give great voice is the benefit of that, is that you can have all three of those things. Oh, I love that. That's a fantastic final piece of advice. So if people want to find out more, is this, um, where's the best place for them to go to see all of it? Uh, TasiaValenza.com is my, it's, it's my general where it shows my voiceovers, but it also shows Give Great Voice. If you only remember Give Great Voice, you can find me on Give Great Voice. I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. I'm all over, you know, business. And my, a lot of my clients come through LinkedIn, the lawyers and the doctors and the speakers, because it seems like it's the more the business hub. Uh, but you're welcome to find me, you know, my website. I'm, I'm kind of all around the place. But Tasia Valenza, you can think of Tasia like Fantasia. My parents were kind enough to leave off the fan. <laughs> and Valenza, so they can find me at TasiaValenza.com. Amazing. And thanks so much for sharing more with us today. It's been really interesting. Thanks for coming along. Liz, you're a, a spark and a, a, a light and you give great voice. So thank you so much for having me on to share my passion. Uh, thank you. And I'm going to do some um, testing of my voiceover skills um, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you already got it down. You give great voice. You're <laughs> You're inviting, you're engaging, you, you, um, you pull out the best in me and that, that in its essence is move, touch and impact. So I, I, would, I would give you uh, A++++. Oh, amazing. And I'm going to get you to do a testimonial after this. That's I will, I will, I'm I will. will. Bit on the video. That's, That's right. I, she gives great voice. Liz gives great voice. That's fantastic. Um, and for those um, watching and listening today, join me for the next episode where I'll be joined by Lucy Davies, who's Exec Director of The Stables, which is a world-class music and entertainment venue in Milton Keynes, um, UK. So um, that'll be a really interesting um, episode to hear all about um, how she's running that with her team. So um, join me. And um, thanks so much, Tasia, for joining me. My pleasure. And if you've been um, inspired by what you've heard today, um, I'll make sure Tasia's website um, is put in the notes. Um, and also, if you'd like to um, spark your own success, then head to sparksucceed.co.uk and book in a free chat with me. So take care and thanks so much for listening and join us for the next episode. Thanks very much. Bye, Tasia. Bye.